Hi, welcome to Gabe's Cave. I'm Brandon. Before we get started, let's thank our sponsor. Before we get started, let's go ahead and do our giveaway this week. Congratulations to the winners, and last place, you get the loot box. Awesome, awesome prizes. Let's go ahead and get to our topic of the day. Topic of the day is we did an interview with Red Power Ranger, Steve Cardenas, a.k.a. Rocky. Um, he was in store recently, um, signing at our store, among other places in Arkansas, and he came by the store, signed some stuff for us. We'll be giving this away, but I'll let them talk about it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this interview with Steve Cardenas, a.k.a. Rocky, the Red Power Ranger, and Uncle Nasty. Hey everybody, welcome back to this little segment of Gabe's Cave. This is an episode, but it is also an interview with Mr. Steve Cardenas. Hello, hello, how are you? Hey man, you know I'm good. Now, I'll right, shake man. your hand. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, guys, we're here, the date today is January the 28th. I know it'll be past that when you guys get to see this, but he was in El Dorado, Arkansas at G uh, Gabe's Cave Comics Card Collectibles at the physical store. He was meeting people, he was signing autographs, and the day before that he was at a doubleheader in Pine Bluff. Yep. That's correct. How was it, bro? Yeah, it's How's been great, man. I mean, like, uh, it's been a while since I've been to Arkansas, so uh, it's been I've been well received, and uh, it's nice. It's just, you know, for me, honestly, I'm just so humbled that like it's almost been 30 years, and to this day, people still come out. They want to meet me. They want to get autographs. They want to tell me how I impacted their childhood and whatnot. So, I mean, it's. It's just a, an incredible thing, you know, like I, I just feel so blessed to be part of that ranger, you know, experience, you know. Once a ranger, always a ranger. Very true. <laughs> and, and and we had people freaking out, like they're coming in the store, like the minute they're walking in, they're talking about it's morphing time and they're beating up putties out in the parking lot, <laughs> ready to see Rocky. So it is, it, it's great, man. Let's, let's talk about what everybody's been hyped about, though, and that's that anniversary thing that you got to be a part of. Yes, yes, yes. Obviously, I can't say too much about it. Right, right, right. Uh, Absolutely. But, uh, but I can say that it's airing on Netflix on April 19th. And um, we're basically getting the band back together. So That's to speak, right. You know? Yeah, man. That's cool. <laughs> basically, guys, you know, they, they, you know, super sealed lips. All of them had, had, they have to be. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean that you guys can't tune in and watch this and be hype about it. Oh, yeah. It's going to be lit for sure. I mean, like, it's, uh, it's basically the first Mighty Morphin Power Ranger episode shot in 27 years. So it's going to be exciting. And uh, one of the cool things is uh, we've got uh, this young girl, Charlie, who's going to be playing Trini's daughter. Oh, goodness. And, um, yeah. It's, like, oh, she's man. Amazing. My, bro, just yeah. my heart. Yeah. My heart. Oh, I uh, know, right? But, I mean, she's incredible, and she really uh, embraced the role, and uh, everyone's going to love this girl, Charlie. She's amazing. So pretty psyched about that. Well, let's talk about some upcoming stuff that you've got going on. I'm sure you've got some events you're going to be doing, some more signings uh, and going well, and doing. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm basically, I mean, obviously because of the, the Power Rangers thing that's coming out, uh, I'm booked solid. Like almost every single weekend over the next year, I'm going to be somewhere. You know, all around the U.S., you know, comic cons and, of course, you know, in more intimate comic book shops as well, too. Um, I like doing the comic book shops more, you know what I mean? Because I, I feel like it can be more more up close and personal with the fans. Right, and right. So to me, it's more intimate and I, I like it, you know. And some Elder Radians even got lucky and got to hang out with him last night. We went <laughs> we went around downtown, yeah, went to a couple what? of local spots. Oh, yeah. And it's super fun to see people when they realize who you are out there. Yeah. And you're like, really? He's like in here? 
<laughs> with us? <laughs> yep. What's the next one on your schedule, just in case we've got some people? Oh, gosh, no. I can't. I don't have my schedule in front of me. I wouldn't be able but to. But they can follow you on your social yeah, media. Yeah, absolutely. If you follow me at my Instagram, at Steve Cardenas PR, which is for Power Ranger. <laughs> right, right, of course. Um, then uh, I, I'm going to list all the places I'm going to be. And it's pretty much going to be every single weekend I'm going to be somewhere. So you can catch me somewhere if you're anywhere in the U.S. <laughs> So besides besides the anniversary Power Ranger thing coming up, um, have you tried to dibble dabble and tried to catch any other acting roles? Uh, yeah, I do other things from time to time. Um, actually, I think there's a there's a, a movie I did a, a, a couple years back that you could watch on Amazon. It's called Beast of the Water. Okay. And uh, Beast of the Water, it's uh, like uh, sort of like Predator. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like, uh, me and um, I think EC3 from uh, from from wrestling. Yeah, and, yeah. and Tyrus, um, and then uh, this guy Santiago Cirillo, who was like Julio on The Walking Dead. Okay. Um, so we're in this movie, and we're these um, like sort of mercenary corporate mercenaries that sort of like Umbrella Corporation type, you know, soldiers that are hired to escort these scientists through this jungle. We're trying to find an ancient artifact. Okay. And then we don't realize that it's being guarded or being protected by this like predator type creature. Um, and uh, then we end up getting hunted. So the guy who wrote and directed the movie was the uh, season six winner of Face Off. Remember that show Face Off? Where they yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So he created this creature, right? And the guy inside the suit was seven foot seven. Whoa. And then when he put the whole apparatus on and everything, he's almost nine feet tall. Oh, my gosh. So this beast was like a real beast. And we filmed it all in Nashville. And uh, we filmed it out in these like forest areas of Nashville. And uh, I have a horrible, like a great, horrible death scene. So it was cool to do something different, you know, because like this character is nothing like Rocky was. Like this guy smokes cigarettes and okay, curses yeah. and, you know, carries a big machine gun and so it's pretty cool so it was uh interesting to do something different and step out of that rocky role so to speak you know? yeah 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 so it's fun i like doing it oh, i'm definitely finna hit that up because uh yeah. when i interview people like this when i ask them that question a lot of times these 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 um celebrities and these actors they have done things that we don't know that they that they've yeah, been in right, yeah. we um uh michael wait thomas matthews he uh did some um like fan films for people that were in like the horror on on and you can watch them on YouTube free oh, okay. movies oh, yeah. and they were really good and I was like I had no idea mm -hmm. that, that any of this stuff was even there so yeah I'm definitely gonna have to check this out Beast of Beast the Water Beast of the Water yeah, yeah 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 definitely gonna check this out look and like always Cable Maniacs we are going to um he he is going to provide an eight by ten yeah 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 I'll, I'm gonna do an eight by ten uh, that I'll sign as a giveaway so uh, I don't know how you guys do your giveaways well or however they, how they've got to be subscribed okay. and there'll be a link in the description and you'll have to click on it and say you want to enter the giveaway and then boom it's done and that's that's all you really got to do right. the randomizer will randomly pick a winner and whew, straight and out we'll, to you yeah, we'll send it right to you man look is there anything is there anything you want to talk about i don't know i mean like i, I like w how long is the interview that we I mean, we could go as long as as long as you got <laughs> stuff to talk about uh i mean you know i think when it comes to like um what people like always want to know is like how I got started in, in, right, right, in, yeah. in Power Rangers. So um, I, I had never done any acting before or anything like that. It was a total fluke thing. Um, so I was a martial artist. I've been doing martial arts since I was like 12 years old. Makes sense. And I was a gymnast as well too. And um, so I was living in Dallas, Texas because I'm from Texas. And uh, there was a commercial that came on the radio one day. I was about 20 years old. And uh, it said, we're looking for new Power Rangers. If you know how to do martial arts and gymnastics, come on down to the local TV station because we're holding open auditions. So I I knew nothing about acting or anything like that, but I was like, yeah, I know how to do karate, I know how to do gymnastics, I'll go give it a go. I get there, there was like 5,000 people in the parking lot, and I looked and I was like, there's no effing way, there's no way I'm gonna make it. You know, there's too many people here, and they're not even gonna care. So I went there, I waited in line, I did my little routine, they're like, okay, great, thank you. And I was like, well, I guess that's that. But like two days later, they called me back and they were like, hey, we really liked your audition. We want to fly you to California to meet the producers. And I was like, wow, shoot, this could be real. <laughs> and then so boom. I got excited. And so, yeah, so they, they got me a plane ticket. I flew out to California the next day. And as soon as we got off the plane, we went right to Saban headquarters and went to my, my second audition. And I did my audition for them. And then they had us read a couple of lines. And they sort of, like, paired people together to see who looked the best. And then... They were like, okay, congratulations, you got the part. I was like, whoa, okay. They're like, oh, by the way, 
we have to start filming right away, so you can't go back home. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what am I supposed to do? I've got one one change of clothes. <laughs> they were like, you have to have your clothes mailed to you. So I had to have my clothes shipped to me, and then they set me up in a hotel. And that's crazy. So I could get moved into a place. <laughs> yeah, Man, that's mm -hmm. just like... You never Dude, know. In a matter you never of know. Like four days, my life changed completely. Because they're like, "Oh, congratulations! You're the new Power Rangers, and uh, we're gonna start filming for a couple of months so we can get some episodes in the can, and then we're going to Australia to do a movie." And I was like, "What in the heck is going on now, in my life right now?" It's you crazy. you came in as the second Red Ranger that yeah. they ever had. You're right. So I, the show was already on, and I was familiar with the show because um, back then I would just watch anything that was martial arts on television. Correct. You know, Kung Fu Theater, Bruce Lee movies, you know, Steven Seagal, you know, the Karate Kid was my jam. That's what got me started in martial arts. And, um, yeah, so anything martial arts on film, I would watch it. So I used to teach kids karate, you know, when I, when I, when I was younger. And uh, we all of a sudden got this influx of new students because of this show called Power Rangers. I was like, I better see what this show Power Rangers mm -hmm. is about. And then I started watching, and I became a fan. So I was like very familiar with the show and stuff. So uh, to in order to uh, to be able to go and be a part of that, and then get hired, and then go step on these sets where I've seen all this, you know, on TV, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's the command center. Oh, there's the juice bar. So oh, how many was it somewhere. just for the Red Ranger role that they were holding auditions? No, for? they were holding auditions for the Yellow Ranger, Black Ranger, and the Red Ranger because the original three had left the show. Oh, they all left at the same time. They all left at the same time. Yeah. I thought Austin left first. No, no, no. They all left simultaneously. And so they had to scramble to find three new people. Wow. Mm. But, you know, all those people still go to cons, and fans still love them regardless. Mm -hmm. Even though their time on the show was very yeah. short. Mm -hmm. it's Yeah, it's amazing. It's incredible. I mean, the fans that we have are diehard, and they know more about Power Rangers than I do. <laughs> and I lived it, and I still they still know more than me. So what's your favorite Power Ranger moment? Well, I mean, there's a few, to be honest, um, you know, but I think probably one of the best experiences I had was filming the movie. You know, we got to be, spend about four months in Sydney, Australia, filming that movie, which was cool because that was my first time ever being out of the country. <clears throat> um, so that was cool. And then, um, you know, one other thing that we did that was really special that I always feel like, um, you know, karmically forever I'm going to be good because of this is um, once a week they would have the Make-A-Wish Foundation kids it would be their dying wish to meet the Power Rangers and so once a week these group of kids would come in and we'd get to meet them and sign pictures for them oh, take photos bro. and all that stuff like that and um, I always thought that was really special you know I, I tell people all the time when you are in a position to make somebody feel like that like only only celebrities and stars can really and athletes, yeah. you should do it. No, yeah, when, when no. you can, when you should. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I and I loved it, but it, I liked it best because they were able to come to the set and they were right. able to hang out with us on set while we we're filming. They get to observe it all, you know, uh, if they were able to make the trip, you know. And it was interesting because you know some of these kids, you know, they were sick, but they ended up getting better. And then I would meet them, you know, twenty some odd years later, and be like, hey, I was one of the Make a Wish kids, you know, that I survived, and you know, I that is so awesome. Long ago, and it's like you know, for them to be able to. To hear that story, you know, and to see them again and, you know, and these days now, what I like the most is when the fans come up and they're like, hey, you know, I, I had a rough childhood growing up and I used to watch your show. It was like 30 minutes of an escape and I just wanted to come and let you know how much I appreciate that, you know, and see like that kind of stuff man it just means everything I mean, mm -hmm. it just, it's hard to realize when you're filming and doing going through it all that you don't realize how much of an impact that you have on people's right. lives yep. you know and you know they're too young to articulate that at the time but now everybody's older and they get to come up and tell us and so for me the experiences that i have about power rangers now are so much more rewarding even than for than it was back then just because to see the impact that we have all these years later on these on these people you know and they're able to come up and and meet us now and and you know say all that and to me i think that's just everything you know i mean it's what i live for so i try to do these shows as many times as i can because i want to try to give back as much as they've supported us i want to try to give back as much as i can and know? and look that's why i stress every live video i make or every video i make when, when you have people come here like steve did I, I tell you look we understand he understand we all understand sometimes sometimes he might be coming at a situation where it's bad for you to, to to be able to afford to spend money and get an autograph, but that does not mean 
that you don't come meet these people. Yeah, right. Especially exactly. if they meant something Hugs to you. Hugs are free, baby. Yes. Hugs are free. Come Hands meet them. are free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, who's, your, who's your best Power Ranger buddy? Well, I got a few of them. So the thing is, like, you know, there were rangers that, you know, I've met over the years because we do a lot of Power Ranger conventions and stuff like that. And so I've met pretty much everyone from every season and stuff. And uh, so there's quite a few that I didn't work with, you know, on Power mm -hmm. Rangers that I met later who ended up being really good friends, like Jason Font, who is on um, Power Rangers Time Force. Okay. So <clears throat> um, he's he's one. Um, Serena Vincent, the Yellow Ranger from Lost Galaxy. Um, I mean, so many, actually. I mean, I, I can't even, uh, you know, Aaron Cahill, who was the Time Force Pink Ranger as well. Um you know, I'm all the all the new guys from the Cosmic Fury that's out now. A uh, bunch of sweethearts, just nice kids, you know. And uh, and I think it's cool because it's like they they look up to us as the OGs, so to speak. Right? Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, but uh, you know, I just like I just look back and look at them and go, God, I can't ever believe I was that young, you know. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's crazy. So. So you're the third Power Ranger that I've <laughs> I've got to interview. Okay, right. So oh. you interview Walter, right? Yep, yep. And and you gonna be on his rap album with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not unless he unless he doesn't want it to sell. Oh man, it's always good to have a hype man. What? Yeah. What? Right. What? 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 Yeah, right. what? Exactly. Yeah. In case y'all didn't know, Walter was he's when I interviewed him, there was like this like por portion that was probably still recorded. So there's probably B-roll footage, but after the interview, he was like he's telling me that he had an album coming out and he put on instrumentals and he literally rapped to me for like 10 minutes and i was like yeah <laughs> that's this crazy. is what's awesome i'm getting to hear the, the yeah. i'm getting to hear the og who, black who, who ranger was the, who was the other person oh you interviewed austin, austin yeah, yeah yeah and austin. it's my the only austin. interview i ever did standing up because oh, he'd been right. sitting down all day at the con <laughs> i prefer to sit down i'll stay like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep so look we talked about who your best buddy is what when you when they when they went to phasing out to another you went you went from the red ranger to the blue ranger right so yeah. how was that transition well, honestly, I mean, it it, 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 it it didn't matter to me, you know what I mean? Like, I knew they had run out of all the Japanese footage. They couldn't create any more. So, you know, they, they and they wanted to start expanding the toy line because they had so much, you know, because um, uh, Bandai and Toy had, uh, you know, a large selection of different Rangers, you know, toys that they could, they could sell. So they really wanted to tap into that market. And the only way to do that was to change the storyline and get rid of the Harlequin you know suits and uh and you know start changing the 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 suits but the in the sentai series the red ranger for zeo or which was called o ranger the o ranger red was the leader so they had to take tommy from the white ranger to the red ranger which means i had to laterally shift from the red to the blue so oh well that yeah i mean it didn't matter to me i don't care i mean it's like as long as i get to keep being on tv i'm cool with it <laughs> now we, we most of the fans probably know that when the when the three that left they left for financial reasons but they were completely up front with you we ain't got to say verbatim what they told you but they were up front with you and told you like <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, well, the thing is, you know, we knew it was a non-union show at the time, so right. it wasn't, you know, there all the things that most union actors were afforded, we never got any of those things, but at the same time, I mean, who wouldn't take the job? Right, you know right, I mean? right. Like, so you just have to go look at it in a way of like, well, you can't really put a price on exposure, so that's the way that I sort of looked at it and just thought well i can take this and parlay it parlay it into other things in the future you can't put a price on exposure you just heard the man yep yeah we had a uh, i don't want to get his name wrong and people in elder Raider are gonna be like oh but this is who it was but we have a, a guy here that went to go do like um the bass reeves the new like is a bass reeves movie or show being made oh okay and you know it, he was a uh, like basically like a Texas law man, but he was lived here in Arkansas. There's okay. comic books about him and stuff. Okay, yeah. The guy from El Dorado went to go try to be an extra. That's all he wanted to do was be an extra because he could ride horses and do that kind yeah. of stuff. But they liked him so much they gave him like a major role. Oh, really? So they gave him like I mean, a recurring role. Yeah. So <laughs> you do, you never know people. You never know. You really do never know. You yeah. Really do never know. I've like I've tried to like hint with some voice actors and actresses that we've had on here that like I think they should try to let me go like do some voice acting. But oh yeah. I, I haven't had anybody like you know. You got an amazing voice, like I don't. Yeah. I don't think they dig it. <laughs> you got a face for radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a face for radio. YouTube killed the radio star, and that's a fact. What's your best con moment? Oh, man, I don't... 
there's so many, but uh, I think one of my best con moments was I got to meet Burt Reynolds because he was doing a Comic Con too, and I was like, I sat right, I'm right next to him. I said, I'm getting a picture with you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That was pretty cool. You Burt Tone, Leon Reynolds. You showed <laughs> me a video of of you lightsaber training with uh, uh, Ray yeah. Park with Darth Maul. Park. Ray Park was uh, showing me some lightsaber stuff. Yeah, you weren't cool. bad, dude. I know. Good, I feel man. like you could be a Sith. <laughs> you should like go try for like Star Wars Sith yeah, Sith yeah. type stuff. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I feel like that would be cool. I, I I feel like, you know, I would like to do more roles where I'm an evil type of guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like that suits me. Yeah. Because I feel like the, the bad guys get to be so much more interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not within the confines of like. What There's you no have bubble. To be good, you know what I mean? Right. Like you have to be wholesome. You have to be good. So they can tend to be a little bit more charismatic so to speak yeah 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 I, I tell everybody if, if i was going to play a hero <laughs> it would have to be an anti-hero yeah, like, like deadpool, deadpool or, or yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. like venom he's a good guy but he still eats people's heads yeah <laughs> right did yeah. you let's plug your social media one more time tell yeah, everybody where uh, they can find you uh, basically twitter and, and instagram are pretty much the only ones i really use it's uh steve cardenas pr for both of them okay yeah okay. so just my name and then pr at the end so like for power ranger and you guys be sure to go follow him so y'all can catch up with him when he's going to be in y'all's area because he said he's going to have something every single weekend. So yeah, there's a I'm high a possibility that he'll be near you. Tour right now, yeah. So it's going to be uh, pretty much the whole entire year. Every weekend I'm going to be somewhere. Yeah, man. Well, look, he's going to provide a giveaway. We got to talk to him for a little bit. We hope y'all learned something. We hope y'all enjoyed this interview. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah, man. Thank you all for 30 years of you know showing support and love, man. I just I appreciate you guys. I can't ever say that enough. And that's what it's all about right there. Peace. Another awesome interview, another awesome celebrity in Gabe's Cave. Thanks to Steve once again for sending this uh, picture that we can give away to you. Enter. It's, it's that simple. Just enter. Let's go ahead and let's, do, let's look at our next artist spotlight for this week. All right. Today we have a special guest in the house, artist Peter Smith. Hi guys, how's it going? Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by the cave today. You know, not a, not every artist gets to come into the cave to do their interview. I know. I'm super excited to be here. So oh, we're, yeah, that's awesome. We're honored for you to be here. And uh, well, let's just go into it, dive into this real quick, and okay. we'll kind of talk about um, you know your art, the 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 uh, your your type of art i guess you would say okay. and since you're an art teacher you'll probably you know let us know the the correct definitions and words and stuff like that okay, since, yeah, uh, we, we we're, do that. okay good good so uh let's just go with this one right the classic that's the anime batman correct that, that is so animated series uh batman adventures continue um i really love the design um from an animation standpoint i think when they when they redesigned the characters and they go ahead and they uh they kind of streamlined everything and um loved the way that batman was and the way he looked and and just everything along those lines i thought they did a really really great job on designing them and putting them together like that as well as all the other characters too i thought they were great tell us a little bit about about your background because i know you're you're your animations in your background so yeah so when i was um 19 years old i went down and i started working at uh the walt disney parks and uh started there within about two weeks i got transferred to the animation department that at that time was disney mgm studios and so when i got transferred to the animation department it was amazing and um and it I got to meet all these animators that worked on stuff and that, that's what I wanted to do. And so uh, a lot of them would teach me how to draw, teach me different tricks on how to draw. And when I went down, I just packed my stuff up in the car and I wasn't expecting to get a job and I got hired like the same day I went in. And uh, so it was really just like a blessing. And so after being there for a while, I ended up, uh, Disney has certain colleges that they basically choose to go to to recruit animators and artists and and other people as well as other companies like nickelodeon and stuff like that so 
I ended up going, um, and I talked to several of the animators. Half of them were like, you need to go to Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. And then some were like, no, you need to go to the Columbus College of Art and Design in Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio. And I was originally from Ohio, so I ultimately chose to go there. And, uh, and yeah, I was trained in animation, illustration, uh, three-dimensional animation. The, the school was amazing. And a lot of big companies come to school. Disney came there, Pixar, uh, Nickelodeon, uh, Hasbro Toys, uh, Lucasfilm. So you had all these huge companies come up there. Uh, and it was a great experience. And yeah, so that was my training in a nutshell. And then as you leave college, you just have to keep going and you have to keep keep training and keep you know doing what you have to do to improve so so art hadn't always been in your background no no um believe it or not i grew up in a really really poor area of the united states in fact they they actually labeled as one of the worst places in the united states to live mississippi uh youngstown oh, ohio oh, oh, oh. <laughs> i was thinking mississippi <laughs> <laughs> and um, and not to take anything away from Youngstown because it has a, a lot of history and things to it like that. But uh, but, yeah, it was a little bit more difficult to grow up in, in that area. And especially to um, you hear so many kids talk about, oh, well, you know, I can't get out of where I'm at because of where I live. And I can't do this because, you know, I didn't have the privileges of doing this or that. And um for me, I guess it was more of I needed to. This is what I wanted to do, and I wasn't going to let anything get in my way. And so you've had, you 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 started working at Disney, got into the animation department, and loved it. And yes. then you turned around. I know you've had several different jobs with uh, with Disney and things yeah. like that. Now you're uh, you're a consultant for Disney. Yeah, I do some advising and stuff. And yeah. then you're also the uh, art instructor or the you run I'm the, the animation director for the Florida Film Academy. Okay. I yes. I, I knew you had a, a good name there. I just and didn't so, know exactly yeah. what so, um, so with the Florida Film Academy, Florida Film Academy is amazing. And uh, Elle that we'll talk to later in the year, she's actually one of my students, and she did a card set for Gabe's Cave as well. And... Um, so what I do at the Film Academy is I write all the art curriculum. I teach uh, from grade school all the way through college. And I teach most of the kids, even if they're in grade school, at more of a, coll a collegiate level um, so that they can, uh, you know, they can progress. The, f the earlier they get started and the more information to learn, the more that they progress. And so getting in and being able to do that is a blessing and the film academy just kind of lets me write the curriculum and do whatever i need to do and they just kind of support me in in making sure that i have uh, you know the advertising the students they they make sure that they take care of all that and all i have to do is a curriculum and teach okay. um and uh yeah so it's great so i i notice that you do you usually do like pencils and then you um I seen you do markers too, right? Like yeah. different kind of coping yeah. markers and, and stuff. And I think there's a big misconception. Like a lot of people are hooked on style. Like I have to have this style or I have to have that style. And I, I do have a style to my work, especially if I'm doing comic book work. Um, but as an illustrator, I have to be versatile. So I have to be able to, if somebody wants something realistic, I have to be able to sit down and do something realistic. If somebody wants something animated, I have to be able to do that. I have to be able to do comic book form, children's book form. And um, so I think a lot of times in doing illustration, I'll study something and figure out what I'm going to do. Um, so we have Stay Puff. Yeah. Is this Jim? Is that his name? Yeah, Earthworm Jim. Earthworm yeah. Jim. I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. And then Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Anakin. Anakin Skywalker. Spider Hunt. Ham. Spider Ham. That, that, that's, that's sick. <laughs> I'll go ahead and let you know. The Batman. Uh, Batman. And then Rex. Rex. All right. Indy. Indy. And why? Indy. Why do you like Indy? Tell us a little bit. Of, tell us oh, a little bit about Indy because um, you got a history with Indy, yes, right? Yes. Indiana Jones was. Um, that was one of the areas that I got to work in when I was at Disney as a cast member. So it was. He was actually Indy. Yes. So it was a it was a great experience. So what do. time of year was that? About it wasn't what, really a time of year. So it was so, like. So as let's say what, about what year was it? Oh, I would say from ninety one till. 
about okay. 2004. So, so if you if you went to Disney in the in the time frame of 1991 to 2007, four, four, four. and you watched the Indiana Jones uh, epic stunts, epic, yeah, you probably seen Peter. You may have. There you may a have. Lot of Indies. I a know. Lot of Indies. So yeah. So that that definitely Indy's one of your favorite characters. Yes, I, I love Indiana Jones. So, are you um, excited about the new one? I am. I am because a lot of the things that are coming out with the new one are really exciting. Um, um, I find out like different information and stuff. So one of the things that I'm hearing is they had a lot of footage that they had filmed in previous Indiana Jones movies, and they're going to be using some of that footage to. Um, to go ahead and fill in some of the, I guess there's going to be some flashback scenes and stuff like that. And also, obviously, they're using CGI to de-age Harrison Ford in certain scenes and stuff. And anything that I've seen, any movie clips or anything like that that I've seen, they look fantastic. Uh, the story seems really good, seems solid. So uh, really excited about it. Really you think excited. it'll be his last Indiana Jones? I don't know. Um <laughs> they he say they say it is, but he doesn't who, want anybody else to play the character. I know. So so and I wish Chris Pratt would. And, I wish and, Chris and that's Pratt. That's the thing. If you look up, there are images of Chris Pratt online as Indiana Jones. I know, and he looks fantastic. And I feel like his acting level, after seeing him as Owen in Jurassic Park and seeing him as Star Lord, he has that comedic action type sense to his acting that he can really go in and I think he would do a great job and be a great Indiana Jones. So, and this is big hero, big hero six. All right. And what's his name? Baymax Baymax. And big hero six was actually a comic book. Yeah, um, that's correct. It was a Marvel comic book actually before, um, before it got turned into an animated feature. But I feel like that story, uh, the character of Baymax and the rest of the cast of Big Hero 6, it's one of my uh, favorite films that Disney's done, and I just really, I really love the character. I think he's great. So I can tell you probably my favorite one. Um, do you have a favorite? I don't really have a favorite. I had fun drawing all of them. And so um, I kind of go into my studio, turn my music on. And I make a list before I start cards for you. So I'll make a list and be like, okay, this is who I'm doing this year. And then I kind of think about what versions of them I want to do. And I knew this was Batman anime series anniversary. So I definitely wanted to do one of those. My, my favorite three are Ham, Rex, and Indy. And Indy? Yeah. They, were, they were my three favorite. And I can't tell you which one I like the best because Rex is amazing. Well, thank you. I Ham's amazing. And Indy is amazing. I mean, they're all amazing. I'm just saying, in my choice. Yeah, those, those are your favorite. Them were my three favorites. Yeah. I like Stay Puff. I love Batman. Everybody knows that. And, and, and that was kind of that was kind of the choice in putting them together. I wanted to do some characters. Um, and, and I see a lot of artists that do cards for you do the same thing is that just wanted to do some characters that may have not necessarily been the forefront in somebody's mind. Like, like you'll see a lot of Batman, you'll see a lot of Star Wars, but like Beetlejuice or Earthworm Jim or. I don't know if I've seen an Earthworm Jim yeah. besides. I think this is the first one. I haven't seen too many sp spider hams either. I know I haven't seen Baymax, uh, Baymax yeah. either, so. Well, yeah, and they're they're fun to do. Definitely fun to do. Well, I I know we like them. We we <laughs> wish that we could keep them all, but you know we don't get to keep any. No, of them. I know. But I know. Uh, we hope you all like them. And uh, Peter, thanks for stopping by the cave. This no problem. Thanks for having me. I'm it's, having a good time. So well, it's definitely a we blast. we have too. So, so I yeah. appreciate you coming no by. Problem, thanks no again. Thank you. Hopefully you all like them, and uh, we'll see you next time on uh, Meet the Artist. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed that interview. If you want to win these cards, all you need to do is like, comment, subscribe. Go to the description, hit that link, fill out everything in that form so we can send you these cards for free, plus a loot box. Um, so good luck. May the odds be in your favor. Thank you once again to RPGHiring.com. 
uh, building people, changing lives. We may put up some of the, we have some extra Steve Cardina stuff uh, signed. It may end up on our website. So be looking out for that. Uh, if you're interested in Steve Cardenas, it is everything that we have signed is authenticated by Genuine COA. Go to gabescave.com and keep a lookout because it may be posted any day. 